Next, let's look at the sewing process. Here we will use the Kubota SRK800 sewing machine. Place the machine on a flat area and adjust it so it's level. Make sure to ground it to avoid receiving an electric shock. Use a seedling tray 28 centimeters wide, 58 centimeters long, and 3 centimeters deep that is suited for the rice transplanter. Use clean trays to protect the seedlings against disease. First, set a speed that's easy to work with. Turn the main power switch on. Here, it's set to a sewing speed of 400 trays per hour. Be careful not to turn the speed dial past the 800 trays per hour mark. Turn the carry motor switch on and set the carry speed to 400. Then immediately turn the power off. Adjust the clearance between the seedling tray and guide plate so it's about 2 millimeters on both the left and right. There are four adjustment positions for the guide plate. Turn the main power switch off to stop the equipment, then make adjustments. Loosen the wing bolt and adjust the tip end of the scraping brush so it touches the surface of the seedling tray. Now adjust the cover soil scraping brush. Make the tip end of the brush the same height as the surface of the seedling tray. Now determine the amount of bed soil. First adjust the height of the rotating brush. The adjuster block face marked with zero should face upward. Place the adjuster block so there is no gap between the surface of the seedling tray and the brush. Then securely tighten the nut. Switch the adjuster block to position 10 for bed soil that is 20 millimeters thick. Move the shutter lever to the center. Normally the baseline is in the center. But if the bed soil is wet and difficult to discharge, move it to the right. If the bed soil is smooth and dry, move it to the left. Temporarily turn the bed soil adjustment dial to the center position. Put soil into the hopper. As a guide for moisture content, the bed soil should slip smoothly off your palm. Turn the carry switch on. Now run the seedling trays. Turn the bed soil unit switch on. Make repeated trial runs, adjusting the quantity of bed soil so it's 20 millimeters thick. Turning the dial to the right increases the amount of bed soil, and turning it to the left reduces the amount. Adjustment is complete when the bed soil is approximately 20 millimeters thick. Then turn the power switch off. Now set the seeding quantity. In this case, set the seeding quantity to 180 grams. First, provisionally set the seeding quantity adjustment dial to 50. Then set the seeding auxiliary dial to 8. The clearance between the brush and roll should be about 4 millimeters. 
To increase the seating quantity, turn the dial to the right. To reduce the quantity, turn it to the left. The seating quantity can be finely adjusted using the seating auxiliary dial. The seating quantity increases if the dial is turned to the left and decreases if it's turned to the right. Put rice seeds into the hopper. Confirm their moisture content by lightly holding them. When you open your hand, hardly any should remain on your palm. Raise the suppressing roller to exit work mode. Put an approximately 1.5 kilogram weight in the seedling tray to adjust the sewing amount. If the seedling trays run empty, they will slip on the belt so the sewing amount will not be correct. Turn the main power switch and the carry switch on to run the seedling trays. When the seedling tray reaches the sewing unit, turn the sewing unit motor switch on to start sewing. After it passes, turn off the sewing unit motor and main power. Measure the seed's weight. Repeatedly adjust until the seed's weight is 180 grams. Now let's look at adjusting the amount of water. There are two watering methods. First is by using the sewing machine's pump. The second is by using tap water. First we'll explain how to adjust the quantity of water using the sewing machine's pump. Put water in a clean container and connect the suction hose to the pump. To prime the pump, remove the inlet cap and fill with fresh water. Then replace the inlet cap. Without priming, suction is not possible and the pump may break. So make sure to prime it first. Turn the main power switch and the carry switch on. So the seedling trays begin to move. Turn the pump switch on when a seedling tray approaches. Adjust the water flow so that water flows continuously out of the pump and is evenly sprinkled over the seedling trays. Make sure to check the watering conditions. Water should drip from the bottom surface. The seeds will not sprout or will sprout unevenly if too much water is used or if too little water is used. After completing all adjustments, turn off the pump switch, the carry switch, and the main power switch in that order. Next we will look at how to adjust the quantity of water if tap water is used. Disconnect the pump hose and connect the watering unit to a faucet with a hose. Turn on the main power switch and the carry switch to start moving the seedling trays. Open the faucet when the seedling trays come close. Adjust the water volume with the faucet so as to evenly water the seedling trays. Make sure to check the watering conditions. Water should drip from the bottom surface. The seeds will not sprout or will sprout unevenly if too much water is used or if too little water is used. After finishing the adjustments, turn off the faucet. Then turn off the carry switch and the main power switch. The reference amount for watering is from 1 to 1.5 liters per seedling tray. Allow the water to pool to a height of about 10 millimeters. When using the pump, increase the water volume by turning the handle to the right and decrease the volume 
by turning to the left. When using tap water, adjust the water volume at the faucet. Now adjust the amount of cover soil. Move the shutter lever to the center position. Normally the baseline is in the center, but if the bed soil is too moist and difficult to discharge, move it to the right. If the bed soil is smooth and dry, move it to the left. Now set the cover soil motor switch speed adjustment dial to 20. Put soil into the hopper. Turn on the main power switch and the carry switch to move the seedling trays. Turn on the cover soil motor switch when the seedling tray comes close to the cover soil hopper. The amount of cover soil should reach a height of about seven millimeters. Turn the dial to the right to increase the amount or to the left to decrease the amount. The surface should be covered with just enough soil to hide the seeds, as shown here. After completing all adjustments, turn off the cover soil switch, the carry switch, and the main power switch to stop operation. Lower the suppressing roller to return to work mode. If the work speed changes, it is necessary to readjust the amount of bed soil, watering, rice seeds, and cover soil. Before starting actual sowing, make sure to confirm each step. First, prepare to start watering. Supply soil to the bed soil hopper. Supply rice seeds. Supply soil to the cover soil hopper. Turn on the main power switch and the carry switch. After the seedling trays start moving, in the following order, turn on the bed soil switch, watering switch, sewing motor switch, and cover soil switch to continue with sowing. Continuously feed seedling trays so there is no interval between two consecutive trays. It's important to check the status at each stage of the operation. Check, for instance, whether there is enough bed soil in the bed soil hopper, whether it's clogged, and whether bed soil is evenly supplied. Check if there are enough rice seeds, and if they are evenly sowed. Check if watering continues smoothly. Check if there is a sufficient amount of cover soil, if it's evenly spread and covers the seeds. Continue sowing while paying close attention to these points. To stop sowing, stop feeding the seedling trays, and in this order, Turn off the bed soil switch, water stop switch, sewing motor switch, and cover soil motor switch. Finally, turn off the carry switch and the main power switch. After sewing is completed, neatly stack the seedling trays 15 to 20 layers high in a place where germination can be properly managed. Avoid overturning them. Put an empty tray filled with soil or a heavy object on top. This helps to keep the top tray from drying out and prevent soil from being pushed up. Also cover all of the stacked seedling trays with a net in order to protect them from rats and other animals. Remove the net and uncover the stacked trays in order to check the germination status. When the sprouts are about five millimeters in length, germination is completed. <laughs>